Messiah the King. In Matthew 24, Jesus is sitting on the Mount of Olives talking to the disciples about what will happen in the last days. Jesus knew that time was running out and he would be killed soon. He wanted the disciples to understand that his death was not his final action. Not only would he arise in three days, but he would return as the triumphant king in the last days. The disciples asked the same question I would have. When will these things be? Jesus' first statement was to tell them not to be deceived. This is his most important point to share with us. If we can be deceived, we can be lost. If we can't stand firm on what we believe some smooth-talking guy with a meal could cause us to lose our soul. Matthew 24 verses 3 to 5 Now as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming, and of the end of the age? And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. Jesus goes on to explain there will be many false Christs. There will be wars with nations fighting nations. There will be famines, plagues, and many earthquakes in different places, but these things don't mean the end time has come yet. These things are only the beginning of sorrows. Jesus called these things the beginning of sorrows because there would be many more sorrows to come. Jesus didn't want us to think everything would be roses and rainbows. The end times will be hard and full of pain and sorrow, but Jesus has promised that he will take care of us. While the last days are nothing to look forward to, he also doesn't want us to fear what man can do to us. Matthew 10 verse 28 And do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Psalms 118 verse 6 The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Hebrews 13 verse 6 So we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Jesus goes on to explain that the people of the end time will be so full of iniquity their love of God will grow cold. Iniquity is doing things your own way. Iniquity is when you know what is right and good, what pleases God or doesn't, but you choose to do what you want to do anyway. This world is full of people guilty of iniquity in every nation. He does say that some will manage to stay away from iniquity and make it through to the end to be saved. These last standing Christians will be the witnesses who spread the gospel to what is left of mankind. Once that is done, then the end will come. Matthew 24 verses 14 to 15 And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. Therefore when you see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing in the holy place, whoever reads, let him understand. Jesus doesn't explain the abomination of desolation, he tells the disciples to look at what Daniel wrote. The book of Daniel goes into great detail about the Antichrist and the false prophet. Daniel figured out that God had set the time of 70 years for Israel's captivity in Babylon. God revealed to Daniel that there would be a time of 70 weeks before the Messiah would come. Daniel 9 verses 24 to 26 Seventy weeks are determined for your people and for your holy city. To finish the transgression. To make an end of sins to make reconciliation for iniquity, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the command to restore and build Jerusalem until Messiah the Prince, there shall be seven weeks and sixty-two weeks. The street shall be built again, and the wall, even in troublesome times, and after the sixty-two weeks, Messiah shall be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. The end of it shall be with a flood, until the end of the war desolations are determined. Notice the six points the Messiah will address by the end of the seventy weeks. 1. To finish the transgression. 2. To make an end of sins. Three. To make reconciliation for iniquity. 4. To bring in everlasting righteousness. 5. To seal up vision and prophecy. 6. And to anoint the most holy. 
Jesus accomplished the first three in his first coming. The second three will be completed at his second coming. The 70 weeks represents 490 years. The Jews count a week as seven days, seven weeks, seven years, or any group of sevens. The 70 weeks broken down into seven weeks equals 49 years, 62 weeks equals 434 years, and then one week which equals seven years. There were seven weeks or 49 years that the Jews worked on rebuilding Jerusalem. There were 62 weeks or 434 years between the rebuilding of Jerusalem and Zerubbabel's time and Jesus. The counting of weeks has been on hold for the 2,000 years since Jesus ascended to heaven. The two sets of three and a half years will make up Daniel's last week or seven years to finish the 70 weeks. The Bible also sets a principle that a day can count as a thousand years. Hosea made the prophecy that Israel would return to the Lord and after two days he will revive or restore them. Hosea 6 verses 1 to 2 Come, and let us return to the Lord. For he has torn, but he will heal us. He has stricken, but he will bind us up. After two days he will revive us. On the third day he will raise us up. That we may live in his sight.